Welcome to The Culture Classroom, a podcast for teachers and coaches by teachers and coaches. Listen to top leaders, innovators, and influencers share their stories about how intentional culture elevates performance. Now, here are your hosts, John Weaver and John Torrey. Let's get better together. Welcome, everyone, to The Culture Classroom. Uh, if you're viewing this on YouTube, it's the first time for us to be on, I guess, the tube. I don't know. Uh, taking this one to a new vantage point, we're going to go to... Uh, this platform as well to showcase some PQD things and maybe give you some ideas of stuff that we're talking about, maybe give you some film footage or uh, some takeaways. So you can, uh, if you're an audio person, you can still listen on the podcast. If you like audio and visual, then YouTube's the place for you to be. But uh, once again, welcome to the Culture Classroom. Coach Tori, Happy New Year 2023. I don't know about you, but it feels like we went from 2020 to 2023 that fast. Yeah, and the world pretty much flipped on a 180, right? I mean, we are upside down and, and right side up back again and uh, trying to figure things out. And I just want to apologize to all of our listeners out there because I've got a face for radio. So uh, to have to look at, at me while we're talking, plus like I am very mobile. I'm a kinesthetic learner. So I get up and I move around a lot. So this, you watch every move while we're recording a podcast. This is going to be new and challenging for me. Yeah, um, I'm going to find the place you know if you listen to our very first probably two seasons uh i was in the closet and uh more wouldn't that have been fun but here we are we're 10 seasons in and i just did a reflecting uh you know just on who we are and what we did and how this all came to be and then now we're we're taking this to youtube and being able to showcase more or less um some stuff that we talk about we can show video to show people what we're talking about instead of just hearing us talk about it uh so just another platform uh, for people to go into and, and listen to us still, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's really cool. And uh, for those of you that don't know, this is season 10. Uh, we are on going on year five together, Coach Weaver. I mean, it's crazy to think that the years just kind of compound and move forward. Um, but Weaver and I still have yet to meet in person. We just That's talk right. on the phone all the time. And <laughs> 2023 is going to be the year, right, Coach Weaver? And and I know I got to commit more on a greater level on my end, but uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, we had plans last year, uh, possibly to meet in Branson. Uh, my family, that's where we vacation. Uh, it, you know, close to Weaver, a little bit farther than halfway on my end, but uh, never didn't work out. So that's all right. Maybe in 2023. Yeah. No, it's not a maybe. We have to make it happen. We have to make it happen. So, uh, once again, here we are, 2023, and uh, you know everybody that listens to us, and if you follow us on uh, Twitter, we don't talk about New Year's resolutions. Those things come and go. They're like for three weeks, six weeks, and then they're out the window. But we've stumbled up upon John Gordon and the one word. And last year was finish, which was kind of a weird one for us. Uh, we started the – Motivation Monday, we went, I think, 20-something in. We didn't finish. But I like the one that you were talking to me about, and I'll let you introduce our one word for our listeners for 2023. And uh, it's a great one. Uh, so take it away. Yeah, and I'm, I'm in a really appropriate setting for it. I'm sitting here in my car uh, outside of Barnes & Noble. I was in the store, and then I'm here. Uh, to do this podcast, then I'll go back in the store and I'll make my purchases or whatever. But the one word for 2023, and it's really similar to what you and I have done over the last five years, at least together, and you before me, and then me before that as well. The one word is learn, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many ways you can learn in 2023. Hence why we're doing YouTube now with our podcast. Uh, right. Maybe you're a physical book person like I am. I also download the audio book. That's that's how I am. And then when I'm on the treadmill or when I'm working out, I like to listen to uh, content as well. But there's so many ways you can learn. If you're going to sit down and watch the playoff games that are about to happen, right? Like in both college and the NFL, great way to learn. Uh, I always have a pen and paper handy with me or my phone handy with me so I can make notes on my phone so I can go back and I can actually like follow up with the things that I see. But learning occurs on so many levels. And the last five years, Coach Weaver, I've learned a lot just from our conversations. Yeah, and I go back to what you just said and what I've been doing lately. But you learn – it's like when we do this podcast, 
it's a clinic every time that we do it when we talk to somebody. It's a clinic of us learning a new way to do things. So if you go back to like Nick Winkler, the four for 40, uh, the uh, to the top with, oh my goodness, my man just went blank on um, the the yeah. left coast offense. Uh, Adam, yeah. Adam Matheson. Yeah, Adam Matheson. So every time we go into these talks and we'll have new viewers uh, or new people on our podcast as we go forward in the, this season – but you learn. And I think you brought up a great point as well is you learn also from those failures that you have, the failing that happens. You learn from that. But going back to the college football playoff, holy cow, uh, the games that are on today, I, I'm pulling for TCU. I told our kids, I was like, let's just see if TCU does it. Cinderella story, you know, fear the toad or, or they hypno toad or whatever they have. But I'm watching all these games, and hey, what's one thing that they're doing versus man? What's one thing that they're doing versus quarters or press man or a little wrinkle in the red zone? So you're always learning in some capacity. For me, I've been doing a deep dive, if you followed me on Twitter for the last four days, of just clinics and taking bits and pieces. I'm learning from that of, you know, PJ Flex thing about it's all about the ball. And then I, full circle moment. I'm watching him about the 78%, how the ball is the program and how they don't flip it to a an official ever, how they hand it even after touchdowns. And I saw that happen when, when Bryson picked off the pass, brought it back, and he was like celebrating with his teammates, and he brought it right back to the ref and handed it to him. And that's, you know, you learn those type of things. So if you ever want to go run your own program or do anything like that or even just in your position group, those are things you learn from somebody else. So we're always learning. We're always evolving so I think the word learn is very appropriate for this season. And what I like about that, that a great example of PJ Fleck. And by the way, they played a great pinstripe bowl. I mean, they were dominant throughout that game, not necessarily on one side of the ball or offensively. They just played a complete game. And I think that's what football is about, right? And you and I are football guys. So for our listeners that aren't football guys, there's no perfect game in football. It's ugly. It's all about winning. Can you convert that third and six? That's really what it's about. Right. Uh, can you finish drives? Are you strong in the red zone with touchdowns or field goals? Um, that's really the game. Uh, and I think it's great because it's all little things, right? Like everyone knows the big things. Like my five-year-old, we have, we watch a ton of football in my house. I know that's going to surprise a lot of people, but like the five-year-old knows things like, he will be yelling out, oh, dad, Justin Jefferson just caught a 53-yard touchdown and or whatever it is. And so we know the big things. The little things are what make the big differences. And that's really simple. I mean, that's part of my two-minute offense that I teach my high school players is hand the ball to the official because if, if that ball flops around on the ground and the official doesn't get it and, you know, five or six seconds can tick off the clock and that's one or two more plays. And those are all things that we do. And you take the podcast that we've done over the last four years, four or five years, and you start putting them together and all these ideas layer on each other. And for our listeners, the same way, and you have your own experiences, but all of a sudden these little things add up to big things, which equals a lot of learning, which turns into a lot of growth. Yeah. I talked to Randy Jackson yesterday and I'm going through CDS two again. So I read Cult culture to Peach strategy. Then I read CDS two when it first came out. When we, you know, we got the manuscript and when we helped him all that kind of stuff, we helped kind of outline that thing. You got a copy, I got a copy, and then I read it. Then I read it again, and I was like, Randy, I got more out of it the second time. I called him yesterday as I got more out of it the second time, and he said Brian Kane says that you should almost listen to the same podcast for that same one at least three or four times in the same week because you're going to pick something up different every time you listen. That's so true. I find myself when I cut the grass, I go and listen to podcasts that we've done. And I'm like, what can I pick up here off of stuff that we've recorded, we've listened to, and we go listen to it again. So you can learn from any, and you talk about football. My daughter yesterday saw the 100 yard when uh, South Carolina was playing Notre Dame, which was a fantastic game. And Phenomenal. big fans of both both coaches, Marcus Freeman and uh, Shane Beamer, of what they're doing with their programs. But the pick six that happened, the 100-yard return, my daughter saw the replay. She goes, they're doing it again. They ran. I was like, nah, they just – so my daughter's starting to pick up that what you have on your TV is what your kids are going to start evolving in. Look, we're both football coaches, and our kids live that, um, live that life of, of knowing football. 
Yeah. And I mean, I think, I think that's a special part, right? Because I grew up with three channels. I write about it in my book. If the world was different in the 1980s, it was different in rural America. My weekly sports illustrated was the only information I had access to. Um, remember in middle school, seventh, eighth grade, when we had to read books on the shelf, uh, I struggled at reading by the way. So like full disclosure, I had to take a reading proficiency 090 class in college. I had to pay for because my reading scores, my reading comprehension was so poor. And I think that's built me into a strong reader today. Um, that's why I read so much is because one, you can read whatever you want. And there's a book out there on almost anything. I was just in Barnes and Noble and they had a book on why Die Hard is a great Christmas movie. Like, <laughs> phenomenal. I sat there and I uh, thumbed through that thing for a while because I agree it is one of the best Christmas movies. My wife and I watch it every year, but there's a book out there on everything. And I just remember growing up, we had a shelf and whatever your reading level was, those were the five or six options of books that you had for the whole year to read. There was never a book on Magic Johnson. There was never a book on Dan Marino or John Elway. I mean, had that been a reality for me, I would have read a ton more. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so you, you are what your environment is, right? And so the one thing that my dad and I still share is Monday Night Football is a big deal in my household. Uh, even to this day, because when you have three TV channels, Monday night is pretty much the only primetime game you're going to get. Pro Quick Draw is the Microsoft playbook development system that is centered on increasing your efficiency in drawing plays, generating scouting reports, creating scout cards, drawing within PowerPoint and Visio. Build your library of plays from scratch or by using the PQD folder system. Utilize our Visio stencils or PowerPoint shape library to help you draw your plays. Create your playbook by adding drawings from your library to a custom template to help organize your final playbook. PQD will resize your drawing based on the template that you have chosen. We believe we have the tools that can help you become a better coach. Yeah, speaking of that, I used to go to the bowling alley with my dad on Monday nights. And he would be bowling all that stuff. And they had a TV right when you walk down uh, the place where you check in. They had a huge TV right outside the bar. And I couldn't go in the bar. Um, I was like 11 years old. That nah, doesn't stop anyone up here. <laughs> and it shouldn't in the South, right? But uh, they had Monday Night Football on. And that's where I firmly – my dad didn't play high school football or anything like that. That's where my love of football came from, of watching it and seeing it and being around it and – you know, even just today, we were putting up the Christmas stuff and I put the trees up and I looked in this red bin and there was my high school, junior college and Delta State jersey. I brought them all down. They were all number 12, which is really cool. And my daughter was like, can I put one on? It's like, yeah, put one on. She put on the first two and she's like, Dad, were you, did you really used to fit in these? I'm like, yes, <laughs> I did. I did many, many moons ago. Uh, so just them sharing in that and learning and that. I, we share something else in common. My reading comprehension was terrible. Uh, the Canterbury Tales were my kryptonite. Oh, and Chaucer, terrible, terrible. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, lingu English teachers that like listen to our podcast. I mean, we all had to read it in high school, right? And it's like, it was awful. It was brutal. Uh, to so much that Miss Ergot was the teacher and she said, you do not need to leave for lunch because seniors got to leave for lunch and then come back. She goes, you need to stay here and read the Canterbury Tales with me and then read it with the class. Um, going back to that, I still don't, it's hard for me to read. I like to listen. Uh, so it's hard for me to read. I'm, I'm reading the turnaround right now. You'd be very uh, excited to know that I'm reading that book. I've had it for a week. I'm at chapter three. <laughs> so slow and steady. You, you gave that to me and I'm going to make that one of my deals is read eight pages a night. I'm going to read eight pages a night and see how that goes. So that's where I'm going to learn uh, to read more. And I think if you are a leader, which a lot of the people that listen to this and are going to watch this, they are leaders in their profession. Uh, leaders read, and that's what's going to have to happen. So, Yeah, and I, I think that you bring up a really good point because what we learn, a lot of times we'll take on way too much, right? Or, oh, man, I really want to dive into this. When learning really best happens in layers, you know, you, the interesting thing to me, I, I mean, I've read so much over the last 10 years of my life or so that what I find now is when I read a book. So like I just downloaded a book from a UFC fighter, actually, like their experience training to fight in the UFC. I know very little about UFC fighting, but as a wrestling coach that appeals to me as a competitor that appeals to me, 
I can't wait to hear this person's journey. But as we read more and as you learn more, ideas emerge because they've layered together. Because, you know, what I read in Above the Line and what I read in uh, Pete Carroll's book, Win Forever, are two different things, but the idea is the same. Right. And so that all of a sudden formulates new learning. And I think to me, that's the interesting part when you just continue to learn, right? And whether it's, um, I know that there's a lot of people out there right now buying Dan Casey's book, the, the Play Callers Club, the one play a day, right? It's the same concept, reading eight pages, drawing one play, uh, listening to one podcast, tuning in and, uh, you know, having one conversation with another colleague. All of that matters. And all of that is fundamental to learning. Yeah, I think if you take just one, go back to Dan Casey's one play a day, one thought away that makes you better. That's right? It. That's like, it. I, I think about I think about right now the key in the NFL, and I've watched a lot of NFL this year. I've got Sunday ticket for free. Uh, so thanks, Direct TV. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, and as we push to the playoffs, the one big thing that every high school coach should be implementing right now that's a trend in the NFL is there's always some kind of misdirection and then something coming back to where that misdirection came from. Right. So, you know, like that's where the one play a day, if you start drawing this and you start putting it together, all of a sudden real learning can really happen and uh, leaps and bounds from where you've been. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I've taken on the, the the one play a day from Dan Casey. Uh, I kind of watch him. And then another thing is I'm going to put one play a day or one clinic a day or a two minute, 20 second clip a day. Uh, not only on our YouTube, but on our on my Twitter, just to help somebody. Uh, I had a baseball coach DM me today, a baseball coach, head baseball coach in our um, in our county, who said he liked what he, what I'm putting out. He's learning a lot from it. So it's just not football, and I don't, I don't want to make this all just about football and all that stuff. Uh, that's what we do, um, but coaches can learn from anything, and I think about. Jason Griffin, who's a martial arts guy here, has Tiger Rock martial arts. I want to go watch one of his practices at his place, his dojo. I guess that's what they call him. I don't know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And and learn how does he connect with a kid? What things does he do? You know, those types yeah. of things. I think you can learn from anywhere, from anyone uh, at any time. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate that thought a lot because. The other thing that makes good coaches, I feel like, is range. And mm. I think about Mike Leach, you know, and his legacy. And Mike Leach is probably the most interesting person alive. He probably was, you know, up until his passing here recently. But range, the range on that guy, you know, he could talk about any subject uh, with from a lot of depth, from a lot of different viewpoints and angles. And I think that's what good coaches do because everybody needs a different viewpoint, a different angle, a different spin, a different reason um, every, that everyone is just built different. So um, I think the more range you have, and that's what learning gets you to, the more you learn, the, the broader your range is. Yeah. This is so comical, but I think about LeVar Burton, the reading mm -hmm. rainbow. 100%. And how elementary that is. And it just popped in my head of watching him growing up, you know, not the Star Trek, LeVar Burton, like but the, no. guy, the reading rainbow and how important that is for kids to read. And, and my daughter, they have to get AR points and stuff like that. She's struggling to read 10, to get yeah. 10 points uh, to where last night she said, are you going to finish your book? I was like, well, my book's a little bit bigger and I'm going to go read eight pages. So I think she can learn from me being her dad of like, my dad's going to take some time to read. It is important, you know? So just yeah. uh, the more, you know, it goes back to modeling. Right. And it's so funny that you bring that up because, and we're children of the eighties. So like I instantly see the starry background with the book opening up and it's just, and those four uh, words popping up, the more, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'll drop like an interesting fact in social studies, you know, as part of a lesson, but it's separate from the lesson, but it, ties into the lesson and then i'll just be like the more you know and then like no one no one says anything no one crazy. they're like, like uh, eighth, eighth graders are not impressed um but it just it takes me back because it's like it's so true those little things uh they do make a difference that is well because sure you got anything else as we dive into this first episode of season 10 um 
man, it went by so fast. Like when, when you said five years, five years, and now here we are in 2023. Uh, wow. So it all started over a graphic, which anybody, if you need a graphic, uh, hit me up. I, I did two for somebody the other night and they're like, what, what do I need to owe you? I was like, I just, I was in the mood to do some graphics and I took the tweet down and they found out it was a guy that used to go to our school and he's now the head baseball coach at a place. And I, he goes, how much? I was like, I, I just wanted to have some fun with the graphic and was going to yeah. give it to somebody. So uh, anyway. Uh, no, I, I love it. And um, I mean, I think that's the best part of this journey I've been on with you is like, it's not, a, it's not about a money grab. It's not about um, exposing other people. It's truly just you and I doing what we do on a daily basis together. That's right. And we say it all the time. We live it. Uh, so it's really not work. And for our listeners and our viewers who've been tuned in since day one, uh, this podcast will keep going until we find out that it is work. And when it is work, uh, we're going to shut it down. We'll shut it down. So once again, we want to thank you for being a loyal listener and now hopefully a, a loyal viewer. We'll see how this goes. And uh, best of luck to everyone in 2023. We have the next episode that's going to be coming out after this one is PJ Katz with Pro Quick Draw. He did a deep dive into the Huddle integration. You're not going to want to miss that. Uh, everybody that knows Huddle, and if you don't know PQD, they work together now and has revolutionized, revolutionized, revolutionized let me say that again, what coaching is. And the greatest non renewable resource is time. And PQD and Huddle are now going to help you save time in coaches' meetings. And uh, you're not going to want to miss that in season uh, episode two of uh, season 10. Anything else? No, nope, it's great. Coaches, hit us up uh, at Coach Weaver uh, or at Mr. Tory and on Twitter. And uh, tell us, what's your one word for 2023? Also, tell us, what's your preferred learning style? That's it. Thanks for joining us in the Culture Classroom. Stay tuned for more episodes.